Hey Tony, what's that you got there? A map to find your way home? You don't need that Tony, you're a homing pigeon. That means you have an internalized way to get yourself home. Well, scientists aren't quite sure how you homing pigeons actually find your way home, but let's walk through a couple theories and see if we can get you on your way. Well then, let's start with the obvious, the sun. In 1950, Gustav Kramer trained pigeons to locate food using the sun as a directional cue. When he used mirrors to deflect the image of the sun, the orientation of the bird shifted correspondingly, pioneering the theory of the sun acting as a compass. Later scientists expanded on this theory by experimenting with the circadian rhythms of birds. They conducted a clock shift experiment in which they exposed birds to artificial light and found that their orientation shifted approximately 15 degrees per hour which corresponds to the difference in the angular position of the sun and the position predicted by the bird's own internal clock. Tony. Tony! Don't you want to learn how to use your amazing abilities to get home? Of course, I'm sure you meant to ask. What about during those cloudy days when the sun is blocked leaving us without a sun compass? While conducting his own studies regarding pigeons, William Keaton noticed that the homing ability of clock-shifted pigeons had no significant difference when compared to normal pigeons on overcast days. However, on days the sun was present, there was a deviation in ability between the two groups. This meant that there must be some other mechanism that pigeons can rely on in order to orient themselves in the correct direction. What do you think this other mechanism might be, Tony? Think back to your days of flying through an overcast sky. That's a beautiful origami car, Tony, but it's obviously not going to get you home. You're in luck, though, because your innate pigeon senses will. Though past research showed conflicting data regarding the sensitivity of birds to magnetic stimuli, recent reports on the effect of Earth's magnetic field on invertebrates, fish, and other species encourage Keen to reinvestigate. So in 1969, he glued magnets to the backs of pigeons and carried out a series of tests. Don't worry, Tony. He used veterinary branding cement, which is non-toxic and non-irritating. In the first series of tests, he released pigeons at both familiar and unfamiliar sites when the sun was present. He saw that both the controls and experimental birds were well-oriented homeward. In another test, he released the pigeons when the sky was overcast and the sun was not visible. The control birds were homeward-oriented, while the birds with magnets were not and had significantly slower homing speeds. We can conclude that birds can use sun or magnetic cues interchangeably depending on their environment. But how do the pigeons detect the magnetic fields? One theory is that they rely on chemical reactions in their eyes that involve a region of the brain called cluster N. Cluster N is connected to the eyes, and if it is damaged, birds are no longer able to sense which way is north. Another theory is that birds are able to detect the angle that Earth's magnetic field makes with the ground via magnetite in their beaks, a mineral that contains iron oxides and is easily magnetized. The latest theory to come out is that they sense them with neurons in their inner ears. These iron-containing receptors have been found inside areas that play a significant role in hearing, sensing movement, and acceleration. Well then, Tony, what are you waiting for? Oh dear.